All right, welcome back to the Copywriters Podcast with your host, the world's greatest copywriting coach, David Garfinkel. And today, very special surprise for the listeners. So I'm going to hand it over to you, David. How are you doing today? Thank you. Yes, I'm great. So our guest today is Harlan Kilstein. He's a copywriter, an entrepreneur, and a whole lot more. Here are seven facts you probably didn't know about Harlan. One. John Carlton and I took turns humiliating his copy when he got started. Unlike most people, he took the feedback and turned himself into a great copywriter. Number two, he's an ordained rabbi. Number three, his sidekick, who we hope you don't hear in the background, is named Kalba. She's a Pomeranian. Her name means bitch in Hebrew. Number four, Harlan lost over 60 pounds doing keto, practicing what he preaches. Number five, his office is a mega shrine to the singer Meatloaf. Number six, he has nearly 2 million followers on social media. Number seven, he would do anything for love, but he won't do that. I don't know what that is, and hopefully we won't find out in today's show. But... I just happen to know we'll find out this. Copy is powerful. You're responsible for how you use what you hear on this podcast. And most of the time, common sense is all you need. But if you make extreme claims and if you're writing copy for offers in highly regulated industries like health and finance, business opportunity, you may want to get a legal review after you write and before you start using your copy. My larger clients do this all the time. Harlan, welcome in Kaaba. Please keep it down. There you go. All right. She's warned. Let's talk Facebook compliance. I have some questions ready for you. Big picture, what are you doing with uh, business on Facebook? Okay. So there are gazillions of people on Facebook. And people on Facebook are interacting with one another. They're sharing pictures of their dogs. They're sharing pictures of their cats. They're sharing pictures of their kids. They're reading the latest conspiracy theories, either right-wing, left-wing, middle-of-the-wing conspiracies. But when something stops them in their tracks, they are incredible buyers because Facebook makes it possible for advertisers to place their um, their ad right in front of the target market. Facebook, it is rumored that, and Facebook has given itself permission, if you read the fine print, that Facebook knows, it's like Santa Claus, they know what you're thinking, they know when you are good or bad. And they know what you're talking about. There was an experiment in Israel where a bunch of reporters wanted to see how far it went. And so although no one in their small circle was getting married, they started talking about weddings on phone calls with one another. A wedding, they were planning for the wedding, who was getting married, what they were going to wear. And pretty soon, even though they didn't do any searching online for wedding stuff, Facebook started showing them um, things about weddings. Why? Because obviously, Facebook knows what you are talking about. I've had this happen countless times that I talk to somebody, and then the next thing I know, they are offering me that person as a friend. Uh, They are showing me the topic that I talked about. So, Facebook is really good whether they're doing, obviously they're doing this deliberately, people don't like it, but people don't realize how targeted they are. Google does targeting, but it's not quite as good as Facebook's targeting. So that means Facebook is the place that you want to be. Okay, but what are you doing? So what what I'm doing is I'm selling a keto, uh, my keto program on Facebook. and it's in one of those niches that Facebook doesn't love. It's the weight loss niche. 
And Facebook has a lot of rules about weight loss. So in classical Dan Kennedy type copy, weight loss, a good weight loss ad includes how quickly you can lose weight, how much weight you can lose in a specific period of time, pictures of the scale, pictures of oversized jeans, you know, the woman wearing the jeans that don't fit anymore, they're, they're big, and tons of before and after pictures. That is the way that copywriters like Dan Kennedy and whoever wrote did weight loss. If you look at the National Enquirer, those are, those are the ads. Except Facebook believes that those type of ads lead to a poor user experience. You cannot show a scale. You cannot show a tape measure. You cannot show a before and after. You cannot talk about losing uh, a specific amount of weight in a, a, a period of time. Um, you can't talk about problems associated with weight loss. So you how are you find about, so how are you finding your way around this? So first of all, it comes to an understanding of what Facebook wants. And this is my own personal view of things, is that Disneyland and Disney World are known as the happiest places on earth. Facebook wants their experience of being on Facebook to be the happiest place on earth. So that means you have to retool there are a couple of ways of doing this, but one of the ways, a way that has made me millions of dollars, is by retooling your copy so that you talk about only the positives and not the negatives. You can show after pictures. You can't show before pictures. You can't talk about specific weights, but you can say things like, you'll probably be delighted with your results. You have to use weasel words like you may be delighted, you may be happy, you'll probably. Um, and so this is the way of it is. So I had an offer that made a lot of money without any Facebook advertising. It had before and after pictures. It said people were going to lose weight in a month. And Facebook said, no. You can't go to that page. So I, I purchased a consultation with the world's best copywriting coach. Who that be? That'd be David Garfinkel. Thank you. And we redid the copy line by line. And that copy is Facebook compliant. It doesn't show um, before and after pictures. It shows pictures of happy women at their weight. Instead of talking about the problems associated with being on the keto diet, we're and, or promising them faster results. We're promising them a simpler and easier way. There's a thunderstorm outside here. Okay. I was hoping that wasn't Kaba flushing the doggy toilet. No. Um, no. It's a thunderstorm. It's pouring outside. Um, but we went and restructured everything so that it was entirely positive and now facebook loves us we spend in any decent month 50 a hundred thousand dollars on that page and we give facebook a dollar and gives us back two sometimes three sometimes more so copy that is facebook compliant is worth its weight in gold you just have to know how to state things in the positive and stay clear of things. There are certain niches that Facebook thinks are suspicious niches because I used to call them with someone who you had on recently, uh, Jim Van Wick. Jim and I would call these areas bad neighborhoods where you may not be a bad person in that neighborhood, but you are certainly in the bad neighborhood and therefore Facebook treats you like with suspicion. Because guilt, they're guilt by association, sort of, huh? Guilt by association. And therefore, you need to 
recognize that you are in that niche. And Google gives you a little bit more latitude than Facebook. So, and, and because Facebook never explains themselves, you are kind of at Facebook's mercy. Well, and, I, I want to talk about your Facebook group. You have, what, a couple million people in, in what's the I have different it? Facebook groups in, in different niches. Okay. Keto is my biggest niche. Let's say I have 1.7 million people. Once you're in the Facebook group and people are in the group, copy doesn't have to be compliant. Now That's if, what I wanted you, to get to, yeah. Okay, so that's why I advise people on how to grow these groups because I've made a heck of a lot of money from, from the Facebook groups and I can send them to non-compliant copy. However, you cannot send them to dishonest copy. If a number of people complain about it, Facebook will ban your URL. So if you send them to copy that is lying, that doesn't deliver what it promises, that you know um, sets people up for continuity without telling people and starts dinging their credit cards stupidly and monthly, then you're going to have a problem. Yeah, so so let me ask you about this uh, keto group. Um, were you using because we because when we did the critique, we just dove into the copy. I didn't get into all the peripheral stuff, but were you using non-compliant copy successfully and with permission, essentially, um, from inside the? Yeah. Okay. And and that and those pages are still up and still converting from inside my groups. But if but I took them to The problem Facebook, is you couldn't Facebook reach out to no. people outside the group with that copy, so you had to have a more compliant copy for the, for the ads that are running outside of your group. Right, and making money day after day after day. So it becomes this art form of being able to think like Facebook. We just did a video, and in the course of the video, um, he put together different clips, and one of the clips was of a scale. And I said, you can't run that video with a scale on Facebook. And he went, oh, darn. And he had to redo it. No scale. So, you know, he shows a picture of a woman in front of a mirror being happy with what she sees instead of jumping on the scale and like putting her hands up in the air and you know the classic weight loss stuff you're in facebook's playground you got to play by facebook's rules yeah okay um so maybe you've already covered this but just to um put a point on it what would you say are the two or three most important changes you've made in copy both on facebook and off facebook as as a result of compliance rules, and maybe you could give us an example of a before and an after of the copy. Well, when you want to make a claim, um, first of all, talk about other people. Talk about people and not talking about you or. Um, That's something you, know, you can't that, do, right? You can't talk. Right, you can't. You, you really shouldn't talk about you in a positive. You will, exp you will be satisfied with eating, um, you, you drink my MCT oil and you will be satisfied with eating less and wait to, you know, a bullet. You will be satisfied with eating less and boy, will you be delighted when you see the results on the scale. Um, you can't do that. That's, that's a no-no in Facebook land. You may notice that you are eating less and may notice that you're happy with happier with the way you look. That's, That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. So, so you have to put the maze and you have to put the weasel words in. So in with the first one you will be eating less and be delighted with your appearance. But but that one's okay, right? No, that's not okay because you're telling people that something is going to happen. 
oh. you have to use the weasel words and add the conditional, uh, um, you may be delighted. And I've discovered that you can essentially take the same words and as long as you're putting the may in, pretty much as long as you're not um, uh, promising a specific thing in a specific time, you can, um, you can get away with that. The other thing is you can't make people feel bad on Facebook. So a subject line of, do you hate looking in the mirror is going to get your account shut down. Mm -hmm. But how to look in the mirror and smile would pass. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's really a different mindset and it, it sounds like a lot of it would be splitting hairs, except it's, you know, lots of money, lots of businesses at stake for with your ability to split those hairs. It's important to learn how to do so. What would you say, Harlan, are the biggest mistakes other people are making on Facebook? So first of all, number one is they don't rule, they don't read Facebook's advertising rules. Facebook doesn't, come up and say, aha, we got you. Um, they have a, a advertising terms that they presume you have read. Most people don't read them. They just take regular copy, put it up on Facebook and think that it's gonna get there. Let me give you one of the things that I just like hit my head. You remember the old V8 commercials where a person hits themselves? Wow, I could have had a V8. I remember that very I much. could have had a V8. So I took an ad, I was getting ready to launch a meditation product. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know why people meditated. So I have a meditation page that has about 700,000 likes. It reaches four or five million people a day. And I wanted to, um, to see what the market wanted. That's what I love about Facebook more than anything else is they'll tell me what they want. And so I said, why do you meditate? Is it to get rid of stress or anxiety? Is it to get uh, calm from work? Um, is it for spiritual growth to practice mindfulness? Um, just type in what you do in the comments below. And Facebook didn't allow that ad. Now, I wasn't even selling them anything. I just wanted their comment. But I said things like stress and anxiety. There's no stress in Disneyland. There's no stress in Disney World. There's no anxiety. I rewrote it with, you know, do you meditate for spiritual growth to, to help you sleep better? to find personal meaning in life, to get along better with friends and family, and Facebook let that through. So you can never let your guard down with Facebook and just be yourself. You have to be in Mickey Mouse land um, so that they love you. Okay, what other advice do you have for copywriters and marketers, especially so regarding- Two more killer things. Yeah. Number one, the market is split. Now, I know that when Facebook did not know, Facebook knows because of the pixel, they know who purchases your product. And they randomly reach out to people and ask them what they thought of the purchase. Was it as described? Back before Facebook knew that I was my product, I was one of the first purchasers of it to test the funnel. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, in my timeline comes a message from Facebook asking what my experience was like going through the whole funnel. So a lot of people, th there are two sides to it. One, Facebook cares about your entire funnel being compliant, or the other side is Facebook only cares about the first purchase and what comes afterward doesn't matter. Wow. It, it depends on your risk level. A lot of people, some experts say, it's only the first purchase. After that, go to town. But if you want to be cautious, you will keep compelling but compliant copy throughout. The other thing is, 
for people who want results and want to use non-compliant copy. Now, let's, let's be straight. As long as non-compliant copy is honest, and those are legitimate before and after pictures of people who used your program and you're the real people and they're not stock photos and you got their permission. I personally don't have a problem with that in the weight loss niche, but Facebook does. So if you have another site and you give a free report about, you know, here are 10 keto uh, cheesecake recipes that, you know, you will love and you do that on site A, and they opt in on site A, and you give them the report as promised, and it's a legitimate report, Facebook is happy. If you then email them to site B, which is not compliant, Facebook doesn't have a care in the world. So you grow your email list, drip on them until they buy, Facebook, you can even use the same pixel. Facebook is good with it because it's not coming directly from Facebook. Interesting. So, I mean, the one thing I'm getting out of this that I already kind of knew, but you really hammered home and, and outlined real clearly is Facebook is concerned first, last, and in the middle about the users having a positive experience. That's it. And they build everything else around that. And, they managed to turn into a real profitable advertising business for themselves too. Now, if you see an ad that is non-compliant, you should go to your watch and set a timer because eventually Facebook is going to get there. Facebook initially ads are reviewed by bots and the bots make mistakes especially in one of the niches like weight loss, keto, uh, dating, et cetera. Um, Facebook, the bots are set, that, like they're, they're, um, their underwear is too tight. Hey, Nathan, can I say underwear on the show? I just want Absolutely. To know, there's no, I know there's no cursing, but underwear is okay. So their underwear is on too tight, the bot. So you may get an ad rejected that is a legitimate ad. So you need to appeal it. But the best thing is um, to write compliant copy from the beginning. And that's what counts. And you can write compliant copy. You might need to book a session with Dr. Professor David Garfinkel in order to uh, figure out the best way of, of doing that. That would be okay. But compliant copy is is a good ad and good copy that's compliant could be worth millions of dollars. You made a very generous offer. May I read it about helping other people out? Absolutely. It's my type. I'm happy to do that. If you're having issues with Facebook compliance and you can't figure out if it's your ad, your landing page, or just that Mark Zuckerberg doesn't like you, then send Harlan a message on Facebook and your, um, I don't know, what is it? Screen name, identity, handle, it's just Harlan Kilstein, H-A-R-L-A-N-K-I-L-S-T-E-I-N. Right, don't try and friend me, just send me the message, it'll go into my filters, I check them every single day, um, and I will get to it. The best thing is to include the URL, and, and we'll try and figure out together, just because I like doing this, and the reason that's in it for me, okay, yeah. because there's something in it for me. Yeah, I was wondering about that. And, and what's in it for me is I am learning how the Facebook filter is learn is working by looking at your copy. So when I see that something isn't working, it's going into my storehouse of, okay, Facebook doesn't like this for some reason. It's like a jigsaw puzzle that you have to figure out or like a puzzle of mate in three moves. I want to know what it is and how to do it. And nine times out of 10, I will be able to pinpoint the problem. It could be the ad um, or it could be the landing page. And those are the things doing. Now I'm, I made this offer and I, I 
helped people before. Um, and I would be very happy to, to help somebody. I'm not charging for this. I'm not selling you my services or anything like that. Just it's my good karma machine. And ongoing research. I mean, you're a mad scientist and you're out there in the field getting empirical data. That's right. And so it goes into my brain. And by being able to exercise that part of my brain that takes non-compliant copy and helps you turn it into compliant copy, I'm not going to rewrite all of your copy with you. That's for someone like David to do. But I will be able to uh, probably pinpoint, uh-oh, here's the problem. Here's the problem. And um, if Facebook hates you, if Facebook hates you and you've had ads turned down a bunch of times because of your landing page, they may have blacklisted that landing page. It may be that you have to try. Let's put it this way. Here's the test. If you go to your own personal Facebook page and you type in your URL and Facebook will not let you post your URL, it means that Mark Zuckerberg hates you and you need a new URL. There's no question about it. Your URL has been blacklisted. And you know, when that. Mark Zuckerberg hated a girl at Harvard, it's like getting a new URL. It's like getting a, a nose job or plastic surgery or something, right? That's correct. Um, and you may have to change it and you may have to put a new pixel on um, to do that because you don't want Facebook associating it with you. So this is, this is how the game is played at the highest levels of getting your nose clean, keeping it clean, and not making promises. Listen, legitimately a woman in my program lost 57 pounds in a month, 57.2 pounds. Her name was Gail. We didn't believe her. We actually, we called her on the phone and Gail put my wife on the phone with her doctor. She was at the doctor's office when we called and the doctor verified. She came in on the first of the month and now she is 57.2 pounds different. So it's legitimate. It was verified by her physician but I can't write that on Facebook. Now I can have a tantrum and say that, you know, Mark Zuckerberg is unfair or I can play by their rules and say something like, you may be stunned as Gail was, but without saying what stunning was. Boy, this is enlightening. This, this really cuts through all of the noise. Nathan, uh, what do you have to say or ask? I think one thing that, uh, we should just clarify um, when it comes to compliance, people always focus on the ad and we've kind of hinted at it, but I want to make it clear. It's not just the ad. Facebook is going to go to your website and they're going to check the landing page. They're going to sometimes look into some of the other pages on your website to make sure. Um, Absolutely. So I wanted to get your, your uh, experience on that. How far do they usually go? I know that sometimes they're going to check to make sure that your terms and services page is there and that there's... Yeah, you better uh, have, a, if you're collecting an email address, you better have a privacy policy. If you're selling a product, is your refund policy posted clearly? Um, Facebook hates direct marketers. Facebook loves e-commerce people. Are you coming across as a scammy direct marketer or a smart e-commerce site? Do you have a toll-free number where people can get in touch with you? Do you have a heading, a logo that makes you look like a real business? How hard is it to get in touch with support? Um, what kind of, are, are you um, affiliated with the Better Business Bureau? Do you have Norton guarantee on the site in case someone makes a purchase, you know, that they'll, they'll back it up. These are all things that point to a legitimate business and not a fly by night. Are there any hidden terms down at the bottom of the page? You remember back in the days when people started with the, uh, the farticles and all those fake blogs, the fake blogs, 
um, where the terms were on the bottom were written in gray on gray print. Facebook is not going to tolerate that kind of stuff. They want you to be on the up and up. So Nathan is 100%. If you're putting up a page and you do not have terms of service and a privacy policy, policy and all the disclaimers that you need, your ad may be perfect, your landing page may be perfect, but they may flunk you because you don't have these extra pages on the site. Great. Wow. Fount of knowledge. You are a fount of knowledge. Thank you. Always my pleasure. Just real quick, I know you mentioned it earlier, but um, what's the best way if people do want to get a hold of you and maybe you have uh, a connection and look at some of their Facebook ads. Where are you found at on Facebook? I, I am found on Facebook, Harlan Kilstein, H-A-R-L-A-N, K-I-L-S-T-E-I-N. Um, you will see a picture with my lovely bride. Um, that's me. And go ahead and send me a private message and I will respond. It'll probably go into my people you've never heard of thing. But don't send me a, a, a friend request. I'll probably say no, unless your name is David Warfield. Oh, but wait, we're already friends. We're friends. Um, but so if anybody wants to be an imposter and be a pretend David Garfinkel, forget it. I already know the real guitar playing David Garfinkel, and I'm uh... not going to accept your friendship. Um, so bottom line is that's what um, that's the way to get in touch with me. Again, there is no charge for this, really, you know, I'm not going to upsell you and I'm gonna redo your copy. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go and try and help you pinpoint what the problem is. No, I'm not going to sign a non-disclosure. I have no intention of stealing your business. Don't send me forms, whatever. If you can't let me look at it, then, you know, then just hire David um, to do this. But this is a quick freebie from me um, so don't send me forms to sign or whatever. Um, uh, if you're in the same keto niche, don't worry about it. I'm a person who believes that uh, the uh, ocean is big enough for everybody to swim in. Um, and that if I help your business, even though we're in the same niche, it's ultimately going to help everybody. Again, that's the good karma thing. So that's it. There's, there's nothing. I'm wearing short sleeves, so I can tell you there's nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> awesome. Harlan, uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show and giving our listeners your time today. And if listeners want to check out more episodes, they can head on over to copywriterspodcast.com. David, anything else before we're out of here? Yeah, we'll, we'll put Harlan's, um, in case you're listening to this while you're, you know, in your phone, in your car, bike or something and uh, his his facebook address is um in the bottom of the show notes so thank you harlan that was really great really appreciate it anytime be well thank you david thank you nathan <laughs>